welcome, friends and enemies, to Bad Voltage Season 3, Episode 43. We are here, we are back, it is March, and this time we have myself and Jeremy Garcia, with no middle name this time, because I'm feeling kind and generous, but we don't have <laughs> John O'Bacon, because he's busy, I don't know, having the words to Passchendaele tattooed on his thighs or something, so... Instead, we have invited friend of the show and past guest presenter, George Castro, to join us. Say hello, George. Hey. Fresh off the bench and ready to mix it up. <laughs> yes. And mix so, it up, we have. Yes, we have. Yes. We have. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. We said to George, um, please, uh, would you come and join the show? And we'll talk about some news. And maybe if you've got some topics you want to cover. And he said, oh, I've got a topic. And then that was the whole show, it turned out. We just talked about all Linux desktop things. We did. <laughs> we yeah. did. We, 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 we did have a kind of a point to start with. And Three cynical old old men. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, uh, it will be interesting. Yeah, the flat pack discussion, which is the discussion George had initially pitched, and we, we thought, sure, if Jono's not on the show, we can talk Linux. That's fair. Let's do that. We're allowed. And then the, the, <laughs> it, it, it went in a direction that I did not fully anticipate personally, but – but it, it was jo- Jono's going to come back with like, there's a reason that we don't talk about Linux anymore. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> I will say, if you are interested in the Linux desktop in general, it got a little existential, existential at times. So, uh, and unfinished. I want to add, we we have we yes. have a lot more to discuss. So we do. That is true. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So on that note, let's begin. So there we were talking about recording a show while John I was away and we said let's talk to George and so uh, I, I, I I reached out to George and said hey uh, do you want to come on the show you want to and he said yeah but I tell you what I'd really like to talk about and I said okay and he said I want to talk about Flatpak let's do it let's talk about application distribution on Linux yeah and I went really and he's like no 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 <laughs> it's genuinely, yeah. genuinely interesting and, and so we had a little bit of discussion and yeah it turns out um, I don't know whether my a lot of my views on this may date from uh, a bit of time in the past or uh, perceptions have changed. And I was, because I was more on the Ubuntu side, I was more on the Snap side, even well after I left Canonical. Snap's basically really? post Really? You, you, you kept, you kept yeah. going on that trend? That's uh, interesting. Okay. Uh, and, this, uh, and this is the point. So um, George brought the point up and I said, yeah, let's, let's have a, get our teeth into this. Because, well, I mean, Jono's not here, which is good, because he'd want to talk about DMGs and how to put things on his iPhone and stuff. Yeah. So It's like we actually get to talk about Linux since Jono isn't here. Yeah, so it's That's great, why I volunteered, um, man. So, George, I know you've been um, spending some time working with the Flatpak t- or Fahab team, I believe. But the floor is yours, man. Talk about what you see as important. Yeah. So I'm actually going to toss it right back at you, because I know you're an app developer, and I know that we work together. Disclaimer, Ak and I work together at Canonical. Um, Yep. And a very large part of Canonical's existence, at least back then, was let's solve application, you know, application publishing and distribution for uh, Linux apps. So I think yeah. even back then we, we recognize and, and unfortunately you still have to mention it, right? Traditional package managers are not going to work for um, application developers, right? It's great for no. your system stuff. Your, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, you're going to go get a bash flat pack. So you're laying that down as a truism for for those of us who are perhaps not as steeped in package management. So the, so for for those of you who aren't, there's basic either apt or or whatever your system supports, and then there's app image, flat pack, and snaps roughly. Yes. So can yes. Give, can you give a baseline to listeners maybe why you don't think application developers should be interested in trying to get their things distributed by uh, distributions in as standard. Uh, right, right. Packages, and then maybe why you think Flatpak is better than Snap or or App Image, and and we can go from there. Sure. So l- let me start off with like your traditional package manager is not going away, right? The entire modern world is built on Linux, and all of that was built on traditional package management, right? Like I could give you thirty four billion reasons why uh Red Hat's traditional distribution is not going to go away, right? Um so that's not what we're talking about, right? If if you're a system administrator and you're administering systems and all that stuff, none of that goes away, right? And in many ways, 
the things that we're talking about depend on those systems already being reliable and things like that. So you want libc and OpenSSL to be continued to be distributed as they are? No change. Currently. No okay. change. What we so do know. So I'm Adobe and I want to ship Photoshop. Sure. Why, but why I would also, I want Flatpak? But I also don't want to leave out open source projects as well because just because your thing is open source, your application is, as ACK has tried this, even though your app is open source, it doesn't necessarily mean that the tra traditional package management system is going to work for you either, right? Back then, what do we do? We'd be like, Stuart set up his own PPA, right? Yeah. Yeah. And what happens six months later, you got to do an upgrade and it all breaks, right? Or you you find yourself managing a bunch of like URLs on your system and all you really wanted to do was get the latest copy of GIMP, right? And the way the traditional distribution model was is you have this version of Ubuntu LTS or whatever it is. And if you want a new version of GIMP, you have to upgrade your entire operating system, right? The kind of, um, I, I kind of call this the Debian model, right? Debian kind of popularizes way back in the day where it's like, here's what we're going to do. We're going to shove everything in a big repo. And instead of you installing applications on top, it's like one system, right? The Debian system. Um, and that's all fine and great. It won the server. Right? It clearly that, works. That model makes sense for servers, though, where Absolutely, you don't necessarily right? need cutting-edge apps. Yeah, uh, no? I, <laughs> I, I, I think it makes sense for some server yeah. stuff. Uh, for, for the core of the server, I don't think it makes sense for the applications you deploy onto your server, just like it doesn't make sense for the applications you deploy onto your desktop. Yeah. And there are people who go totally immutable, right? Those of you out there that are using CoreOS or Flatcar Linux and stuff. But that's kind of a different discussion, because I think... Those are DevOps kind of system administrators who have those discussions and they're kind of paid to figure all that stuff out, right? Yeah. And that doesn't affect sure. the general, hey, I, you know, I'm so, using Linux on my desktop. So for this what, discussion, what? you want to focus on desktop applications, both open source and yeah, potentially yeah. proprietary. Let's, okay. let's, talk, so. let's talk about that because I think there, there are problems there that need to be solved. Um, yeah. And... I, 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 I would like to reserve the right to reopen the server applications. Oh, absolutely. Door absolutely. Later on. Not, um, not server deployments, not the server core, not the core, not that, but, um, your Nginx app but thing P that you wrote in PHP yeah, yeah, or something, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Pete, yeah. Someone, someone putting that kind of thing on a server. If we say this is only about desktop applications, a bunch of, Snap partisans will say you're deliberately ruling out a thing we do and Flatpak doesn't do in order to make Flatpak look good. And that's not the goal. I, would, I, I, <laughs> I cannot wait to answer the question about snaps on server. <laughs> yeah. But I said, I, I said I'd be on my yeah. best behavior. Let's, let's talk yeah. desktop apps first. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. we're, no, yeah. we're talking we'll about desktop we'll applications first of all. Yeah. yeah. So what, what, what is, what is your big, what is your big question? Okay. So here's, here's, here's the problem that that these new formats kind of fix, right? Is we came from the kind of Debian background, right? Where you, you have this like culture of, uh, maintainers around a repository and they're vetting packages. They're doing things. You've, you've, how many meetings did we sit on, right? That it was like the Python transition from this version to this version or the, you know, uh, how, how are we going to transition, uh, the tech stack, like tech live, right? From, you know, and Debian has this version and we want to pull that into Ubuntu, you know, uh, all the kind of stuff that makes operating systems kind of have to be right. And now I think it's very obvious now that that model does not work for normal users on client. Um, and my argument is twofold. A, no one's using client, relatively speaking, compared to other commercial Linux based operating systems like say your chrome os or your android yeah. mobile linux linux mobile whether you consider android quote unquote linux or not doesn't really matter in this case um other than they're shipping on every like way more devices in the last 10 minutes than all of desktop linux probably right so yeah, that so. model i think is proven that you want to separate the application development from the actual operating system it's two separate layers I, um, my counter example to this is iOS Safari, mm -hmm. which is, um, the only browser available on iOS. Right. Everything else available on iOS is just a shell around it. Mm -hmm. Um, and iOS is used by a shed load of people. They're all happy with it. And Safari updates are rolled out as part of the operating yes, system. Yes. But that is a business decision. Just like <laughs> Debian. We could make the same business decision, right? True. True. Hmm. 
However, if you are making an iOS app, right? Yes. You just make an iOS app. You don't, other than like new features, you don't you don't sit there and say, "Oh no, we have to backport our application to the older iPhones." Right. So your so your argument here is about the wisdom of using what we might call new style app distribution. So yes. that's either Snap Fat Packs, App Images, whatever, yeah. Nix OS, um, whatever, doing that rather than doing Debs and getting them into a release of Debian and. Right. I think almost everyone agrees with you, right? Yeah, but have you seen that done sustainably well in a way that doesn't result in a a single blessed app store in the way that it, every example you've given has one company that controls the entire ecosystem? And it's right. very difficult to replicate that, in my opinion, in, in an ecosystem that is more broadly diverse and inclusive and, and allows for anyone to build an app to do anything they want in a way that I think Linux will users will predominantly want. In perpetuity. Sure. So a requirement for this will probably have to be, and, you know, it's all still kind of, in, everything's in progress, right? Like both Flatpak, Snap, and everything, it's it's all still being developed, right? And I think the default is you do have a centralized place that gives users that kind of experience that when they install it, they can do so. I remember like when I first got my first Samsung Galaxy and it came with two app stores, I thought it was the stupidest thing ever. With the same apps in both, but because they were arguing in the background on who's going to get that's like the cut. Linux way, right? Right. So I think the default is I think a lot of uh, distros would just ship Flat Hub as a default, but you have that option of shipping more stuff. So for example, Fedora ships their own internal Fedora Flat Pack repository in addition to Flat Hub, and they don't even ship all the Flat Hub; they filter it you know, based on certain requirements that they've decided, this is what we want our user experience to be. They can still build on Flatpak. They can still use the same common stuff, right? But then they can they can customize that experience to what their goals as a project is, right? See, to me, right, the issue with, with, with all of this stuff is mm-hmm. exactly as you say. It only really makes sense when there's basically one app store, because if you've got two, then it's stupid. Yeah, right. you've got the capability, but you've got the capability to do it on Android because of the Samsung store and F-Droid and things like that. Yeah. Um, but it's confusing. And what, um, so Canonical got a whole bunch of pushback on this, there only being one Snap store and yeah. all that. Yeah. Um, and, the the alternative argument seems to be no 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 it's possible to have loads of flat pack stores yeah. um whatever and there's no app image store at all but in practice it's not that way because of some nefarious desire to lock things down it's because it's the only way that makes yeah, sense I to agree. actual people people are like George loves flat packs therefore he must hate that snaps are centralized and closed yeah. I think that's the best and, part of snaps yeah and so Jeremy's <laughs> Jeremy's point it's the best part J- J- Jeremy's point though, that it's the Linux way I don't necessarily think it is but I'll spot you it for the purposes of the next. 30 seconds no one seems to be trying to actually solve that problem because everyone who tries to solve this sort of what we want is a bunch of co-equal app stores has the let's make everything distributed worms eat into their brain and they build gnu teller or whatever instead or now they're probably doing web three here's here's a (laughs) here's a practical example like the people who are always like but snap is centralized what if we had everything in one store how awful is that right and they're the first people to ask you, hey, how do I, how do my, my fedora came with like an extra flat hub repo. I don't even know what this one does. Can I get the real, you know, like, like there's both, there's both, there's two sides to every coin, right? Like I do not like, I use fedora silver blue. It's like my daily driver. I love the thing. I don't like that it ships with two flat hub remotes or two flat pack remotes, right? They have their distro flat packs. And then there's Flat Hub, which actually has the FFmpeg I, mean, I want. And then I'm finding myself in 1990s Linux again, you know, where it's like... How do you even know <laughs> it has two? Why do you even care? Aren't you just looking at an app store and you don't really care which server the the binaries are on? I mean, whatever, dude. I don't, like because, because unfortunately, <laughs> you click in the app store and then you're like, let me find... GIMP or whatever, and it shows you in the drop down of the four different places you can get. You can get it from your repo, you can get it from the flat pack, you can get it from Flat Hub. That's yeah. obviously stupid UI. I mean, like, so, um, Ubuntu always had multiple, um, Deb source, Deb and yeah. Deb source lines in these extra apps, sources not list, yeah. right? But you didn't care because you were presented with one list of things. The yeah. idea that the same software might be in multiple places and it's offered to you as different things. 
that's stupid. I don't know whether that's a stupid policy decision or a stupid UI decision or, or my personal opinion of both. Why do we care what URL software comes from? I get it. But, but that, but that's the thing. Yeah. We shouldn't have to, we shouldn't have to care. If we are made to care, yeah. it's because a whole bunch of political people go, well, we could all cooperate on this, but the Linux ways to not cooperate and do it ourselves, our own way, identically and separately, even though this screws yeah. over users because getting publicity for my thing is more important than people using it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. However, I, so I, I think there's, there's, mitigations around that right like i like that i got the nod from jeremy <laughs> like, yes. like for example you, you buy a steam deck it comes with flat hub out of the box and that's all it comes with you can't install anything else on it out of the box unless you like unlock it and you unlock the immutable file system and stuff like that that allows people to have the freedom to make their own repos their own store or whatever um but like kind of having a de facto way and i think one of the things that helps people make those decisions is where are the apps that you care about on Right. Like I want OBS and I know that, um, OBS is like an official flat pack. I think it's still in beta. So it's not like official, official yet. Right. But I know that's on flat hub. I know that the official Mozilla flat pack is on flat hub. Currently, right now, this is in progress in the web UI. There's no way for you to really tell like what is, you know, verified coming from a thing. But if you, if you look into the beta, we have a way for app developers to like log in and say, I'm Ack. Here's my GitHub account. I'm in charge of this repo. Therefore, you get the little check that says. You've just caveated you know, so many things and I have so many questions. I know. Yeah. I can't well, wait. Also, to, to be clear, you, you cannot have any kind of this is an official package thing if you allow arbitrary multiple app stores because i can set up an app store and i can yeah. say yeah in the in my app store this is the official version of mozilla and it's got to have all the official branding mm -hmm. which means that you have to have some centralized authority that agrees on what officialdom is Indeed. and that's flat out not compatible with distributed stuff you can't have it i agree any attempt to fix it, it involves it, the blockchain or something at which point let's let's, <laughs> let's remember no. let's remember too that the, we have flat pack the tool and the pack and like the packaging format, which is like flat pack the Unix tool. And then we have yeah. flat hub the store. So we, we need to remember not to conflate those things, right? So, because so if, getting back to the original, because I think we skipped a, something that listeners may be interested in. So the yeah. original pitch for why things should be included upstream is, you know, if you, whether you use Fedora or, or Ubuntu, it doesn't really matter. Canonical or Red Hat or whomever will continue to maintain everything. If there's a security yeah. update, if there's a CVE, they'll ship mm -hmm. you a security fix. What value and problem is Flatpak and Snap solving to, to the average user? Like, why should the average user even care? So me personally, I think it's ridiculous for you to have to upgrade your entire operating system to get a new version of a package. That's just not how people use computers anymore. So, I, but you don't. Secu security patches go in. No, no, no. I'm talking about new major versions of software, right? Like if I pick, I want a stable computer and I want Ubuntu LTS, I am stuck with that. I am stuck with a but frozen that, that, version again, of that archive that I cannot again, get new ver major versions of. Again, that's a policy decision that's not a technical limitation that's the fact no, it that is a technical limitation. LTS releases right if you always want the latest don't use an lts like if you want stability choose right. lts if you want cutting edge don't but those are use they, they use both yeah. and we have both available one is solving one problem one is solving another why do i need to use a rolling linux to get a new version of gimp why can't i keep my stable os and have my applications decoupled from the system, like every successful commercial operating system that we're trying to compete against. Okay, do you want another? Do you want another reason why I'm not sure it's going to work? Huh. Because we don't understand how to provide a consistent API set, which is available in different um, versions to applications and keep it stable, which is why the fonts don't work in my snaps or um, the, uh, the, I don't get the GTK theme that I've got because those things have to be ported into the new world and they aren't. We built an entire desktop stack, which doesn't work like this. Absolutely. There's a lot of tooling that needs to happen around XDG portals, around all that stuff. The entire Linux... Every, everything has to go Wayland rather than X because yep, otherwise it breaks absolutely. all the security between You have things. to have the permissions. Yep. Absolutely 100%. And while you're at it, if you're going to change the model, you might as well make the root file system immutable as well. This is a fundamental shift in how a Linux distribution is made. The entire Linux distribution landscape, for the most part, 
is built on the concept that you are trusting every application that is installed on that system. If Linux yeah. desktops did not exist and I said, Stuart, I have a great idea. I'm going to make an open source operating system. It's going to be fantastic. Other than having to give root access to every person or team for every single application that you installed, I would get laughed out of every conference. But you know what? This is how the Linux desktop has been because... But I don't think Flatpak or Snap solves that problem. I think I, they almost make the problem worse in that they claim to kind of solve it, but in fact don't solve it at all, which false security is almost worse than knowing that you're not secure at all. I think it is a necessary step to move in that direction, right? I'm not saying that flat pack sandboxing is perfect, right? But the default of everybody has root and everyone's been pretty cool about it, so it's okay, absolutely has to go. That is just not going to yeah. work. Jeremy, <laughs> why do you think that they don't solve it? Uh, uh, why do you think that they they do solve it? Maybe I've missed something in it, development. I, I mean, this, this might be a this might be different with Flatpak, which I know less about than Snaps. But if I install a Snap, it can't read any of my home directory unless I give it permission to, much like um, an iOS or an Android yeah. app. So if you if you're an Android app and you install uh, your photo editor, it will say, "Can I have access to your photos?" And you say yes or no, and then that's that. Yeah. I installed and a snap, photo. And snaps are the same, right? I, I don't know. About, I don't know about Flatpak. I believe yes. that's the same for yeah, Flatpak. But, so by default, those apps will only see what the maintainer has kind of determined is like a good default. And then there's tools that let you tighten that up or loosen that up. Like, or then it expect. doesn't work, and you install it with Classic, and it gives you no protection at all. Yes, right. if you if you install which it is with the Classic, accepted that- like from what I can tell, the accepted solution. I don't think it is. No, um, uh, installing something with Classic, uh, installing a Snap with Classic, is, in my opinion, the same as rooting your Android phone, right? Um, it's the and, same as uh, installing which, your, a traditional. Mm, Debian that seems package. like a pretty large disconnect from how the ecosystem pitches it. When you root your phone, it wipes your phone. It's pretty difficult to do if you're not technical. Uh, it's a single dash dash Classic to install a Snap. So I, I don't know how you're equating those two wildly divergent things. A snap installed with classic is has the same permissions as that deb PPA or third party repository for VS Code, except you get sure. the benefit of automatic updates or and channels yep. and stuff if you want. Right? I, I have I have installed none of the snaps I have installed are installed with classic. What does really? VS Code have? Does is VS Code still classic? I don't know. Don't use VS Code. Whoa. Looking at my system right now, <laughs> Whoa. First, first things that aren't in base, it's almost half classic, half not. Yeah. Some, okay. some are historical. Like I remember back in the days, Slack had classic, but there's no reason for it to. Where usually things like IDEs and stuff need more permissions because, like we said, they're not, applications aren't, aren't written in this kind of model. Whereas, OS 10 went through this transition the past few releases, yes. right? And they were kind of app developers, you know, it wasn't this Linux is about choice stuff. It's like, it will either work on the new version of OS 10 or it won't, right? So that kind of forces them to move to the model. And that's why they're able to lock down lots, parts of their OS. So that to me is um, an important part of the discussion, I think, right. that... So looking at the list, I stand corrected. I was wrong. Uh, Android Studio, for example, is classic. Right. And I think some of this is because um, the Snap pitch was you should write things that operate in the way that Snaps work. But if what you want to do is just get your existing thing and wedge it into a Snap container, then just tell people to install it with Classic, and yeah. then you get basically none of the benefits of Snaps, but we get a Snap, so we can talk about it. No, but you and do I get... Suspect, I, and Flatpak, yes, yeah, fine. You get updates, whatever. But Flatpak is kind of the same. Um, the issue is that the Linux desktop does not have enough mindshare, enough influence with app developers of large apps like this to convince them to do the work to fit in with how it should work. Right. Whereas the Mac, for example, does. Apple say, okay, you want to dis- distribute in the Mac App Store, you have to jump through all these hoops to do it. Yeah. And if people go, then screw you, I'm not doing that, then Apple go, okay, fine, then you don't get access to all of our customers. Yeah. Sucks to be you, I guess. Whereas if we do that, everyone will just go, well, then fine, we'll just distribute a dev. Why do we have 
have to listen to you at all. There's no influence that it's got to be a community based, do this because it's a good idea, softly, softly, catchy yeah. monkey kind of vibe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I, I, I think I see, you know, and I, I don't want to say I have inside information since it's all kind of public, but I think we've seen a lot more talk and discussion and applications starting to, to come to Flathub, right? And let's, you know, Valve shipping it on like a cool piece of hardware that everybody wants. Probably, probably a good, <laughs> you know, a, a, a good thing for Flathub, right? Like, let's not, not lie, right? That thing, you know, people who weren't interested yeah, in Flathub yeah, before no. now all of a sudden are interested. Um, the Steam, the Steam Deck is important. I, th- I think from my point of view, um, the last 12 months has seen me kind of switch away a bit because, um, fine. Flathub had a bunch of, community momentum but an mm. awful lot of that community momentum was generated by it not being canonical <laughs> which has annoyed me forever yeah yeah right but snap seemed to have um uh it didn't have as much community stuff but all of the actual apps that actual people wanted seemed to have snaps whereas mm-hmm. the flat hub ones were um they were repackaged snaps sure they were repackaged devs there was no upstream involvement at all sure. um it seemed very much like um, uh, there was a, a fair amount of snobbery about closed source apps and how people, um, p- yeah, fine. We haven't got this closed source thing or we haven't got Slack or whatever, an official Slack package, but you're wrong to want that anyway. Why aren't you using Matrix to talk to your company? And, and I, f- I feel like has Flathub chilled out about that now? What do you mean? Has Flathub chilled out about? I mean, like, so I think whether you like Snap or Flatpaks, you're going to get people yelling at you because you want software. That they don't like, right? Like I, 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 I think that pie, uh, that that kind of Linux snobbery is package independent. <laughs> Canonical <laughs> in the past, I believe now not, but I'm out of touch with these things. Canonical in the past had people whose job it was to work with upstream yes. and were paid to do so. Yes, someone was investing time and money and resources in helping make software that people wanted available to people on the Linux desktop via the Snap Store. Right. Is anyone doing that for Flathub? Or is it kind of, we would like you to get involved? Yeah, it's just volunteer. Hey, it's just volunteers, man. It's, you know, it's community stuff. You know, we, we you can you could donate to Flathub, and I do, right? But, you know, we have infrastructure. We have man. bandwidth that needs to be paid for. A lot of it is donated, you know, that kind of stuff. But, like... No, there really isn't anybody investing in the kind of commercial ecosystem investment in the Linux desktop right now, other than, uh, you know, the community, like obviously Endless, Gnome, KDE are organizations that are helping that. But if you're asking if there's a multi-billion dollar corporation, you know, out there trying to, you know, sending DevRel folks to teams and stuff like that to, to you know, to help them get their stuff in. Well, no, like you said, it's kind of a community driven thing. Yeah. So this yeah. is kind of my reservation about getting too heavily on board because every time we try and do some kind of big picture thing, yeah. but there's no one around to invest on yeah, it. Yeah. You what get the tragedy is, of the comments. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah, know this. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't happen. Right. You know? Right. <laughs> well, Stuart, I wasn't expecting to answer why the Linux desktop isn't a financially uh, you know, <laughs> that was a bit of a pivot. Smart decision for any company to invest in. Um, but if I knew that, I'd be on a beach. You know what I'm saying? Here's, <laughs> hey, here's, here's what I know, right? Like p- people have apps. We have smart open source people who are like, like being part of communities. They like working on stuff. And then we have people that want to consume that stuff, right? What do I know? I do know that over the past, whether you like or hate what Epic did with the Apple thing, right? We know that app developers, and the app stores, those relationships can be strained, right? Is there a better way to do it? I believe the part of the reason I volunteer is like, you know, Flathub isn't looking to take 30% of, you know, of, of if Adobe ever shows up. I think up. even Apple fans now realize that yeah, like Apple is being wildly greedy with their approach and are yeah, not doing the right yeah. thing. Like <laughs> Apple know. themselves do not realize <laughs> this, I promise <laughs> you. <laughs> oh, they know. They just don't care. Uh, Literally talking to the government <laughs> right. about this tomorrow but, morning. Right. But between, between <laughs> the kind of duopoly that you see in mobile, right? Yeah. And then the kind of 
raw anarchism that you describe a little bit. There's plenty of gradient there for, for organizations to provide value because that's how Linux distrib, that's how classic Linux distributions got to where they did in the first place. Right. Yes. Like, so you know what? Like Deb, like Debian, right? There's Debian back in the day had no business being as successful as it did for a bunch of volunteers that just collaborated together loosely. Right. And I think now 20 years later, right. We tend to forget that sometimes there's just work you can do in open source and you could just go do that work without having to wonder, you know, Hey, but do we have, you know, do we have a go to market strategy? Do we have a community manager? Do we have this? Do we have that? That, you know, kind of pervades tech and startup mentality right now. And if you don't have that, you're going to fail. I don't, I don't believe that, you know, however, I do feel that as a result of this, we are going to move slower. Right. The, like we, the Linux desktop is just now getting to this point after this model had been proven by not only mobile, but other Linux desktops like Chrome OS. I, right? I think I've slowly started. I think I would have agreed with you 10 years ago. I think I've slowly come to the realization that the, the lack of product focus is part of the Linux ecosystem's problem. And the, the desire to argue about very minor technical semantics forever, which are not important to the end user, are, are the reason that we are where, where right. we are today. Right. That's why I'm like, yeah. dude, if, if, if I can help you get Microsoft Edge on your laptop and you install a flat pack, oh, then cool. Like, I'm not here to, I'm not here to try to, you know, so this is this is the thing I think that the reason I brought up the idea of someone investing in this so it is someone's job yes. rather than someone's hobby sure. to do this is that if we build a world in which people restri- release software upstream they don't care about our desktop and then someone else takes that software and repackages it into a flat pack so everyone can use it that's the Debian model. That's what Debian is. You have a, you have a maintainer who repackages upstream software into the distro. So what we're getting is out of operating system updates, which I'm good with. That is handy. Yes. <laughs> yes. Right. But it needs to be, um, the packages need to be built and distributed by the people writing the software, which essentially means we need a way of letting people care. Sure. Or getting, getting people to care about delivering software to our desktop. The yes. difference with Snap and Flatpak, I think, is that 10 years ago, if you were an upstream piece of software who did care about our desktop a bit, we made it really, really hard for you to care because you had to learn to be a Debian luck, maintainer. Yeah. Yes. And now See you, in six you can months. care with, you can care with almost <laughs> yeah. no effort. I've tried to build yeah. Debs and it's really hard, right? Yeah. The repackaging now, thing though is a transitionary yeah. thing, right? Like we don't, we don't sit there and go, hey, everyone, take your devs and then just make them into flat packs. Now, we that is being done because, you know, pe- chicken and the egg. You need the app, right? Like I That's need, what Fedora does, right? Well, not, not proprietary application, right? No, but they mostly repackage. They convert apps to flat packs, correct? They, they convert some of their... RPMs into flat packs. Yeah. So like if you install, okay. if you install Fedora Silverblue, like your, uh, GNOME, uh, is it the clock app? The kind of core apps in GNOME, those are flat packs because they want those tied to like the distro release model there. Whereas you can get the same GNOME stuff on Flathub and it'll be like decoupled from Fedora's release schedule. It just gets confusing because they move fast. So it's like when they rebase, I'm not supposed to care about the distro release model, right? Yeah. Right. I'm supposed to be able to go, I want the newest <laughs> yeah. GNOME calculator on my Ubuntu 2004 desktop, right? Yeah. Do it. You can actually do can that. I ha- can, I, yeah. can I have that? Okay. Yeah. And it's not going to screw up all my other apps? No. And it's going to share my GTK theme? Uh, yep. Usually. It's not, it's not going to go, <laughs> no, you have to use AdWaiter. It's going to use my Ubuntu GTK theme. I feel like maybe it isn't. Well, <laughs> so, like I said, it depends. So, is is your argument that you don't like the model because your themes don't work? My, my argument is that Dude, we can fix themes. I think it, I do. Like, I, themes I, will get I fixed. Love the optimistic no, optimism. I don't, I, I, I don't know. No, I just, that we I, can. I just think it's unbelievable that you're like, you know what? Let's just leave the model the way it is. Either you get the themes right, or this thing isn't going to work. Are um, you really all, just going to keep installing applications as root on your PC? Seriously, at the moment, I have loads of snaps. Yeah. If I need an application, I now look for a snap for it. 
Okay. Right. And maybe I should pivot to looking for a flat pack for it. Sure. Part of the reason I haven't done that is historically, um, GNOME technologies tend not to integrate very well with Ubuntu because they tend to think Ubuntu did it wrong and what you should do is do it our way. Mm -hmm. And I haven't seen that attitude change much. So I don't want to start installing flat packs and have it go, you are wrong to want the Ubuntu theme. What you want is AdWaiter. So we've installed it with AdWaiter. And if you complain about that, your problem is that you, you're you wrong to like a different thing. And I'm like, no, I want it to fit with my desktop. I, I want it to respect my system dark mode. I want it to, you know, I want when I click it, it, yeah. it to open in, it's open in my web browser. I don't care how this happens. I don't care whether you have to have an XDG meeting to work it all out or whether you have to invent new stats or whether there has to be a D-Bus API or something. But there's quite a lot. Part of the reason I historically used Ubuntu is that I, the choices that the opinionated choices that the Ubuntu development team made about the desktop were ones that basically I agreed with. Uh -huh. And so I was okay with that. I'm not, I don't care about the technology underlying this stuff, really. What I care about is that the strategic choices that are made are the ones that I want to be made. I don't want flat packs to be used the way non Ubuntu users accuse snaps of being, which is that it's basically a forcing function to get you to buy into all the other stuff the company does. Mm. Right, mm -hmm. snaps. If you put, if you, if you say to people use a snap, an awful lot of people who don't use Ubuntu think it's a stalking horse to get you to switch to Ubuntu. Right, in the same way that a bunch of stuff which is only available on iOS, I love how it's having the there. totally opposite effect. But <laughs> right, yeah, I, and yeah. you know the fact that Canonical are do, not doing a very good job with snaps these days <laughs> um, is including me away from it. This is part of the reason we're having this discussion, yeah, right? Yeah. But I, but I do not want to be forced in the other direction. I am deliberately not running a super duper up to date GNOME desktop on Fedora Silverblue for a reason. Uh -huh. And if it turns out that a bunch of the problems I get when I install Flatback are because I'm not doing that and I'm wrong, <laughs> and because I should be doing that. Yeah then I'm going to be just as annoyed. And I've seen literally no proof that that's not the case. Because things like GNOME extensions break every time I upgrade. Um, themes don't work. AdWaiter is now the only theme, and wanting something different means you're basically wrong. And there are long blog posts about how you're wrong to want different stuff. I, I, think, we <laughs> right? I, yeah, I think we started talking about application formats and acts just like, I hate <laughs> the entire Linux desktop experience. I mean, well... I, I, I'm looking at my Linux desktop. Yeah, I, yeah. I have no intention. Of, I have no intention of shifting. Yeah. I've got a Mac over there, and I'm not using it. I'm not using it for a reason. Yeah. I like my desktop, but talking about the technical underpinnings of packaging formats in a way which leaves out the context to me feels like it's missing the point entirely. What's important is the strategic direction here. It's not whether a, a config format uses YAML. Sure. Or sure. Jason. Right? Sure. I think part of the reality of using a Linux desktop, though, is you have to care about this. And that's not, the, that's not true for any other ecosystem. Yeah. Like who is doing that act? Like who's, who's your, who's your banner leader? Are you, are you saying that there's a leadership problem on client Linux? Because I'm not going to disagree there. Right. <laughs> Nobody knows what <laughs> this have, is. There's no, like, have a like depending on the day you catch me, I might even say there's no such thing as a Linux desktop. You got a bunch of yeah. Linux distributions you have what gnome yeah. wants you have what kde wants but if i buy a steam deck that comes with a desktop and that's kind of the steam deck experience right yeah so i i don't know like yeah so so this this bit this became a kind of now, now we're having an existential Ooh. crisis i thought we yeah. were talking about <laughs> where, package where, management and shit yeah <laughs> where for the linux desktop yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> look i get it well, look, look dude 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 you've been there you we, we were at the same uds's right remember we we're gonna jump the chasm yeah. and be right oh, we were yeah, gonna be yeah, chrome yeah. os before chrome os and it all it all fell down right like yeah i Did personally because chrome os is in fact chrome os and it's it quite is. popular it is. It is. But what I'm saying yeah. is Ubuntu had aspirations to be that. Hmm. We're going to, we're going to yes. bring the people that bring Linux to that. That was obviously a monumental failure, right? As far as desktop goes, right? Yeah. However, however, uh, remember, hold on. Re remember 10 by 10 by 10. 10 by 10 by 10. Oh man. Why, <laughs> yeah. Why, why would you bring that up? But There's however, for you. <laughs> you can see other communities that aren't exactly quote unquote mainstream that are healthy and do awesome stuff. Raspberry Pi people, right? Like they have, 
entire sets of YouTubers and marketplaces. Yeah. People are making money. People are making the coolest projects and stuff. Do I think the Linux desktop is going to end up being like you go to Best Buy and buy a Linux desktop? That ship sailed so long ago. There are people now that are so new. They missed the three yeah. other times the Linux desktop uh, failed, right? I, <laughs> I stopped care. I stopped caring about. I stopped caring about being mainstream. However, what we can do is give people a good experience. You know, especially people like us, right? We work in cloud, right? What does that mean? You go, you buy a Mac and it has a terminal. You know how to use the terminal. You know how to do dev stuff. We can give those people a great experience, right? We can be a technical thing that people can use, and it doesn't have to be. Like this huge commercially, you know, go to the Best Buy model, right? What do I think the success of the Linux desktop is? I think someone's going to go and say, oh, I saw Steam Deck and I bought it. And when they dock it, they'll get a desktop. They're not going to care about anything except when then they click discover and they type Chrome, they're going to get Chrome, right? And I think that will be a successful community and it'll be like a little sub community of its own thing. There'll be people who will be doing that stuff, just like emulator communities and all these internet communities and maker communities and all that stuff. That's where I think. And I think in order to do that, we're going to need to solve the application thing because it's the most basic thing that Linux still doesn't get right. We can at <laughs> least fix that, dude. We can at least fix that. That's, that's what I'm, that's what I'm getting to, right? I'm not, I'm not sitting there saying that, you know, if you use flat packs tomorrow, you know, you're going to go your Thanksgiving dinner, Jeremy, and your aunt is going to have an opinion on GNOME versus KDE, right? That's not happening. <laughs> sure. Yeah. No, you that, know what I'm saying? Like, right. Yeah. So let's, let's, I, you know, I don't want to say level set because we don't know what the future is, right? Like, you know what? If, if you would have asked me, I can go right now and I could buy Linux desktop products from people. I could buy System 76. I can buy ThinkPads with Linux. If we could just, if, all this does is make that experience better. So when Linus Tech Tips tries to install Steam and it doesn't destroy his freaking operating system, then I think that's good progress. And that's good enough because I'm old it's and I keep telling people, bar. I keep telling it, people, it, it I don't want such a low bar. <laughs> I know. Hey man, I, not I, my I, circus, I, not my monkeys. I'm doing the best that I can here. You yeah. Know? I am trying I, so hard not to buy a Mac. Like I have friends who literally are like, George is going to give the Linux desktop one more chance. You know, and I'm pretty sure there's a betting pool, and Jeremy's probably bet it all against me. Yeah, I'm. I'm just happy that my Ubuntu LTS is not randomly hard locking, which it did for like two versions over two years, and I was just about to <laughs> yeah. just about to throw on the towel, and it, it stopped, which is which is. Great. In order to get there, also in lovely. order to get there, the only you know to to kind of put a keynote title on it, I think the only way to kind of save the Linux desktop is to destroy our idea of what a Linux desktop is. I think it's ridiculous that we we are just trusting, especially you're in cloud, Jeremy. You see all the stuff we see, all the work that's going into S bombs, uh, security, mm -hmm. signing packages. We don't have any of that. We're we're hoping that whoever is rebundling your Discord thing or whatever isn't a jerk. We could do a we could do better than that. And you know what? Maybe it's not Flatpak. It's probably not Snap. But we should at least start to think about that model. And moving the Linux desktop to a zero trust model. I strongly believe that's the only thing that you, you have to do that. Any improvement that you want in Linux or in open source. I, I struggle to see why everything shouldn't be zero trust. I mean, that's, <laughs> it seems like table stakes at this point. Yeah. I know. Well, I, I, I have a tweet. Where I was like, you, you wouldn't deploy a mutable server. Why would you deploy a mutable desktop? But that was a bridge too far for some people. So no, I mean, I mean, how 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 long how long are we going to be the unreliable one? You know. Yeah, I mean, I'm not disagreeing with you. I mean, see, <laughs> here's, here I thought here's we were going to have like a technical conversation about <laughs> Snap. Oh, uh, we, oh, implementation we can go with that. Here, versus here it is, here it versus is. implementation. This this did get existential very quickly. Yeah, I, I spent every single day for like almost ten years doing user support on AskUbuntu.com. You can find it. You can see all the questions that I've touched. I am telling you, there is no future in end users. Doing depackage configure A or, you know, whatever happens when you do an arch upgrade and all that stuff, people aren't going to use it and they're not using it. That's why Linux people buy Macs. <laughs> I, th I, I, th I think that battle has been won yeah. at this point. Yeah. Um, we it is reasonable to ignore people who are like, there should be none of the newfangled packaging formats. Um, they're wrong in the same way that it's reasonable to ignore people who don't want system D. It's like, fine, you want to go and do your thing, go for it, but yeah. 
that battle has been won. Now we're allowed. We're allowed to stop having the Deb versus Flat Pack fight. Yeah, Jeremy's going to disagree with I me. I don't know wow, that really? I agree with that. I think. It's- oh no! Yeah, no one's taking your Debian packages away, dude. No one's taking away your Debian packages. I'm not saying how I feel personally. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm saying right. I don't know that broad consensus has been reached there. Oh yeah, well it's Linux people, right? I mean, we we, we there are people still arguing about C and stuff. People, yeah. people are still people are still arguing about Alsa. Yeah, they're they're people militant Versus about Pulse Audio. C implementations wow. or Lib C implementations, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. There are there are people still having this argument. So, yeah, I mean, we probably ought to stop at this point. I mean, I appreciate we can continue having oh this conversation God, for, for another twelve hours. I was going to say, and here we <laughs> thought we might have time for news. <laughs> no, and, man, and we didn't, we we didn't don't. even talk about interesting I, stuff. We we just yeah, got started. It's, I, I figured yeah. we'd get into uh, di- where everyone stands on daylight savings time, but that that may yeah. also be a, a bridge too far. <laughs> I was like, "Hey, maybe um, solve fundamental problems," but Stuart's on about themes, so let's let's you know let's not do it. <laughs> ah, <laughs> I think <laughs> underestimating how much because aesthetics matter is, I agree, is part of the problem. I yeah. agree one hundred percent. I agree one hundred percent. I'm all I'm saying is don't lose the forest for the trees. Like if you're, yeah, you know, no, if you're I like, if you know what I'm saying, you have to get the fundamentals right. Right? Do you think? But I think maybe that should be considered a fundamental. If the first experience yeah. you have is that this looks ridiculous and like nothing else in the entire system, you're going to be like, well, I don't know enough about the benefits of flat pack to care, but that experience was terrible. No more flat packs for me. We'll be 99% of people who aren't developers. Right. So yeah. I guarantee that that's how Apple thinks probably, right? It's all one cohesive thing. To yeah. Me, right. Uh, but I don't have a $4 billion budget or whatever to do this thing. So we're doing the best we can. Right. Uh, you know the difficulties of of trying to work through multiple organizations, multiple people, multiple people who have goals. It it's hard, and I agree that you know it's not awesome, right? But there are people, volunteers who are working really hard to do things like put those themes in flat packs. So when you do it, it's nice and transparent in the background. Is every app there? No. So I just upgraded a machine to Fedora thirty six, and it has that auto dark light theme thing. And yep. half my apps work, and when it works, it works awesome. And the other half don't work, <laughs> right? Like my Discord won't because that's written in Electron, and it's got you know thirty seven thousand reasons why it doesn't care, right? That doesn't mean we shouldn't not try to evolve and push the stuff forward, right? Because oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. if if that's gonna be if it's gonna be like we don't know how to make this work, we're just gonna keep the traditional list Linux distro model, then that's it, you know, I. Buying a Mac and an Xbox at some point, right? Like, what, <laughs> why the hell would I use? Why, why would we sit around talking about how smart and awesome Linux people are and how great this Linux desktop is and we can't even get the basics right? You know? Yeah. So I, I didn't mean to get more X extension. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm, I'm trying to figure out a way yeah. to tie a bow on this one and, and bring this train <laughs> home. And I am struggling. <laughs> Start. I, I, hey, man, we're going to save the Linux desktop with all this new shit. Oh, should we even try? Th- that? Is that how we ended up? <laughs> yeah, no, I, mean, I mean, look, this this is where the conversation goes. Yeah, and yeah. part of the reason I think that it's hard to tie a bow on this is that these are questions which are possibly unanswerable, but right. certainly unanswered. Yeah, yeah. And part and part yeah. of the reason for that is not just that we don't know the answers, but that even if we think we do know them, we don't have the resources to carry yeah. it out. It, it, you know what? I'll, let me bring here. I'll bring in some positive, Jeremy. This is the next generation. The new people that are getting in are are the ones that are going to solve the problem. Ak, you and I are old, right? I read a thing. Yeah. It's like, hey, it's time to refresh the uh, indicators because the app indicator spec is too old. And, you know, Gnome doesn't ship one. And then like, but KDE does. And it's like this whole kind of mess. And I was like, I don't have time for this anymore. Like, it's your I, 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 that the yeah. collective group that came up with NPM install breaking in the entire world is going to fix this problem. Cause I, I got some bad news for you. <laughs> well, I'm not saying that if that, if that's, if that's what you think, like, I, I agree that like, you can't just have a rant, like, a random person deciding to do a commit somewhere on GitHub and then it breaks like everyone's Linux desktops. I'm not advocating for that. What I am advocating for is we can do the things like the kind of traditional Debian model and get that nice, you know, curated experience. But I also don't want to wait six months to get a new browser, right? Like there are, there's a gradient in there. And I think we can, we, 
we can do a better job that quote unquote, we can do a better job than what we're currently getting. Right. Because everyone loves their traditional distro model until they gatekeep that thing that you want. Then all of a sudden you have to move yourself. And once you break out of the model, there's a hole there and you've added a PPA and now it's too late. Right. Like the, the system isn't at the state that you started in. Right. So yeah, I agree. There are a lot of problems and, you know, uh, having, uh, duplicated libraries now that live on the flat, the application side of the house instead of the system house. You know, how do we keep all that stuff maintained? All that kind of stuff are the same questions and problems that distribution maintainers have already solved, right? We just need to figure out where in the stack that fits now, right? I'm not saying, uh, that it should be a wild west either, right? But we can bring the good parts of the distribution model along with us. It just lives in the application layer and is decoupled. Just like in server, you know. So I, I'm right, I'm I'm curious what the bad voltage community thinks here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Are, are you a snap oh, user? Are you a flat pack user? Are you a traditionalist? Do, Is do that you, what we're calling people that want yeah. the old model traditionalist? Okay. Yeah. Do do you do you even know? Do you just have software and neither know nor care what format the file it arrived in yeah. was? Yeah. Oh, that is a good point. Yes. So yeah. head to the forum, head to Slack, and let us know. This is a discussion that I feel like should continue for a while uh, online. Yeah. I'm in. Awesome. Well, George, thank you for joining us. This was excellent. As always, it's been too long. I try to bring it as much a- militantness to you as possible, Jeremy. I, 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 I feel like maybe we should keep him and get rid of Jono, would you reckon? <laughs> we would be able to talk about Linux <laughs> if we didn't have Jono. We could talk about <laughs> Linux actually more. You know? And so. on that bombshell. <laughs> Thank you for uh, thank you for listening, <laughs> listeners. Um, <laughs> thank you very much for joining us, George. Um, uh, Jono will be back with us next show. Hopefully, <laughs> we should see what happens. You're I like mean, one and I out. Wish you're out, Castro. You're out. I, I, I mean, <laughs> seriously, this this year has been just a consistent set of media disaster. <laughs> it, it has. It has. <laughs> um, but yes, George, thank you for joining us. Thanks for um, having me. This 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 has been bad voltage. Thank you for listening. Goodbye. <laughs>